Okay, so when people are in the fields of addiction, um, uh, like I'm in 12-step programs, so in the fields of addiction, often step one is that life has become unmanageable, has become chaotic, uh, one's capacity to function has decreased, and often one is attracted and is doing things which are unmanageable, life is unmanageable, one is not able to show up or be reliable, uh, all kinds of chaos is happening. As one does spiritual work, life becomes more manageable and things get done and there's an attraction to healthy things and healthy activities and there's a capacity to be um, uh, responsible, to do tasks. And all of this stuff is just a consequence of elevating one's consciousness. So as one elevates one's consciousness, the capacity to function, be reliable, do activities uh, increases and manageability increases. So how does one uh, increase one's level of consciousness? Well, you do by doing spiritual work. So by doing spiritual work, it could be joining a 12-step group, doing A Course in Miracles, doing self-inquiry processes will increase the level of consciousness and one can do, uh, one ends up being more reliable, more functional in one's capacity to do things. In terms of procrastination, an interesting thing is with procrastination is like, if one is uh, doing spiritual work, then uh, one is letting go of the, of the limited idea of self or self-centeredness. So then um, one is trying to align oneself with doing God's will or align oneself with what is God's will for me, which means usually um, love and service. So one is praying for the willingness to you know, perform better in one's job so that one can uh, serve the company and the company can serve humanity. And uh, it's contextualized within the separated ego consciousness as a good thing and if one is not able to do that due to resistances within the ego then one is praying to God for willingness to perform an honest day's work and to serve the company so the company can serve others and uh, uh, or if one is doing the Course in Miracles um, you know it's uh, it's you know loving ones is to let go you know you're letting go of your grievances around people so that one is accessing a greater field of love and so out of the field of love there is a greater willingness to, to serve and to, to perform. So this breaks down the procrastination barrier. Later on, now one of the traps that I hear from people around procrastination is like the ego just wanting to be uh, for example, to do the things that the ego wants to do, and it's not a spiritual intent. You know, it's more like it can often be like. With, in my case, it would be like a programming from the world. Like my parents would say, you have to be the best, or you have to be number one all the time, or you have to get the best grades, or whatever you do, you have to like be really, really good. So this is more like just an ego thing. It was like a self attack. I just have to be better. So that's not really a spiritual intention. I mean, there's nothing bad with it. But then, you know, to get spiritual power on your side, you're, one is operating less from the fields of self-centeredness, just trying to perform just to be better than others, or just to meet a parental expectation, or just to get the approval from the boss, or whatever it is. Um, so one is now doing it in a spiritualized form, so the, uh, so the, it's now coming, you know, as you start to dissolve the ego, it comes more from fields of love, responsibility, integrity. Later on, there is no self-centeredness involved, so even procrastination dissolves. It's just an unfolding from the source. So, yeah, any questions on that? <coughs> what about doing nothing like just staying in bed and not doing <laughs> bad things no but no no good things like and yeah what about not doing things which we like or we 
have probably good purpose and still money not doing that. Yeah, you know, like uh, you know, I come from like a you know like a, a food addiction. A food addiction. I get you get from a food addiction background. I could spend the whole day with the TV on in bed eating donuts. You know, mm -hmm. so oh, I see from that point of view, like the inertia not to do life because one, I'm a, I'm wrapped up in donuts and being lazy in bed. Um, so from the, from that, well, the most important thing to clear there is the the deepest level of ego inflation, which would usually be the addictive behavior. So the thing with that would then, you know, usually with addiction is to join a 12-step group, and then your, sp your sponsor will tell you to have the support of the group and then to give up the, and go through withdrawal from the addictive behavior. Um, and then, you know, have the aid of the group, um, do spiritual inventory, and then eventually to help others or if you're not doing a 12-step program, it would still be to go through the withdrawal of the uh, behavior and reconnect. So you can, you can also use the observer, even if you didn't go to a 12-step program. So let's say I'm at home and there's, um, it's a good question, how do you use the observer to get rid of um, procrastination? You can also use the feel the feelings to let go of procrastination as well. So it's like, okay, so let's say the, the, the story is that I'm just stuck feeling lazy at home eating donuts and watching TV all the time, and the addiction is to donuts, then one would go to, so as soon as, with addiction it's like a craving arises, like a desire for the donut, or it could be a cake, or whatever it is. So the desire could be alcohol. So desire works, so it goes, what's observing the desire to have the donut, you see. Go to the observer, and or go to the disinterested observer, the detached observer of the desire for the donut, and you keep doing that every time the craving for the donut arises, and then you'll dissolve that unhealthy bondage addiction to the donuts. Then, um, then if you go to the, um, you can go to the observer. You can go to the observer of something that just wants to stay in bed. So you go to the observer of that, and, and then you'll find that the observer of that which wants to stay in bed is neutral as to whether you're in bed or not. But then, you know, what, what can happen is there can be like lethargy or resistance. So lethargy and resistance, you know, so then you'd go to that which is observing the lethargy and the resistance until you dissolve the lethargy and the, and the resistance. So once you've observed the lethargy, usually then there is like energy and, and neutrality. When there's energy and neutrality, usually um, intuitively there'll be, the, there'll be the desire to want to do something, express, express life energy. That will be divinely orchestrated. So that will get rid of the, the inertia and the addiction and the lethargy and resistance. That you could do through the observer tool. You could use a 12-step program or you could use the observer. The other way to do it um, is to use the field of feelings with procrastination. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's like, um, say you're sitting at home eating donuts and feeling tired all day long. So you could feel out the tiredness. Uh, you could feel out the craving for the donuts. You could feel out the resistance and the exertion and the exhaustion and the inertia, and then you'd have energy and, and, and calmness and peace. And then from that state, it's not necessary just to sit in bed eating donuts, you see. So you can dissolve it using whichever spiritual mechanism. Um, so that's how I deal with it spiritually. I mean, there are other ways at lower levels of consciousness, like, you know, um, which would do it. But in terms of using spiritual tools, uh, those would be the spiritual things. I mean, they, I mean I'm a hypnotherapist, and there's different tools, but in terms of spirituality, that, that's what I would, I would use. Those are good questions. Any other questions on, on that one? <laughs>